wow, it really is a good height for you. This is key. Look at the cool So this is our tiny but mighty bathroom space. Shower! Shower is power! Hey, so Dave and I, we're about to go on one of the biggest adventures of our life. Basically, a road trip to everywhere. And we figured why not kick things off here in our own USA by doing a road trip across America to find some of the coolest hidden gems this country has to offer. But before we do that, whoa, we figured we'd give you an awesome tour of our home on wheels that's gonna take us there. Our camper van, Desert Snow. Oh, oh, oh. And at the end of this video, stick around. We'll actually tell you how we came with the name Desert Snow. Welcome to our new home on wheels, the 2022 Winnebago Echo, which we believe is perfect for our upcoming adventures. Which will certainly take us to places that might be a little more off grid and definitely into all four seasons. So Desert Snow with this insulation this thick has the all wheel drive four season capabilities to get us there. Now it's built on a Ford Transit chassis, which is only 23 feet. Now that allows us to take this van almost anywhere, including many spaces only class B's can go. Now, I'm pretty tall, I'm about 6'3 on a good day, but it's 6'8 inside, which is perfect for me. See? Wow, it really is a good height for you. Hmm. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, okay, so we're in a very uh, windy area, so we're getting a lot of pollen and dust on the inside, so I'm gonna be constantly wiping things down. But this is our Ford chassis cab here. So it's a very standard Ford chassis cab. Now, one of the highlights for us that we really enjoy is the CarPlay, which allows us to put up our directions, play music, things of nature up here. And one of the things we will be getting at some point is a rear view mirror camera. Now, although we have a rear view mirror when you back up to see when you're backing up, it's nice to have something to see back there, you know, on a normal basis basis when you're driving forward and because the Winnebago Echo doesn't have a back window it's probably smart for us at some point to get one of those uh, rear view cameras so at some point we will now what's really cool about this uh, chassis here is the fact that it has something extra special that I think I'm gonna let Dave tell you uh, thanks babe now the Winnebago Echo has a Ford EcoBoost V6 engine that carries 310 horsepower and the great thing about that and we've tried it in many different circumstances over the last nine months but it has tremendous power especially heading up mountains and going through mountain passes so just FYI we've owned our Winnebago Echo now for about nine months and we've made some small adjustments to make it more comfortable for Tanya and me including hey this is Brady this is our big boy named Brady, right over here, right Brady, wanna high five, high five -a. And over here, snuggled on her princess pouch, I call it, this is Billy. Hey, Billy. And we'll go over a couple of things on how we made it uh, comfortable for all of us, but I think the best way to start this tour up is up in the cab, so I'll see you in the front. Now this is gas powered, and we've found that it gets about 12 to 13 miles per gallon, which we actually think is pretty good for the size of the RV. But let's head inside because Tanya has something she is excited to share with you. Thanks, babe. All right, so before we get into that, I have to mention, our RV does not have slide outs. So space is very important and maximizing it is even more important. So one of the coolest features in this RV that I really do enjoy, well, one of the coolest is this right here. It not only has here in the cab section, does the driver seat turn around for a super comfortability, ha! Not only one, but it has two. So actually both cab seats turn around to allow us a little bit more space to make it feel more like at home. I also like the fact that it has this giant lagoon table so it can swivel up and down. So it allows you to have like flexibility to work. For me also the two chairs, you can even put, and they make these for these vans. Let's say for instance, you want a little additional space for someone coming in. They actually make these now so that you can actually get a little mattress that would work right here. So it could be just a little lounge area, like so. Just kick and swirl and turn and toss and twirl. But for me as a person that likes to cook, this is key. 
and I'll tell you why in just a second. All right, welcome to my kitchen, you guys. Yes, a hop, skip, and a jump from the living room space we were just sitting in. But I love this. Uh, we were talking about the lagoon table, and this is really nice because I just raised it up to almost, and I can still raise it up to almost match the height of the counters in my kitchen space, which allows me a multi-functioning use of the kitchen space, especially for someone who likes to cook. I need some additional prep space, and that affords me it. So let's just hypothetically say I want to shift this, which is my laundry mat over here for dish drying. Well, this is our sink right here, which by the way, the piece that comes off of the sink is a also secondary use as a cutting board. Although I don't use it as a cutting board, I actually have my own cutting board. But this is great so you can wash dishes and they can dry right here as you're doing that. Or if I'm making dinner, I can actually use it as an additional prep space to the kitchen because this here is a two burner. It's a little messy in there, but it's a two burner. Yeah, two burners right there, Suburban, two burner propane burners. Um, we also have an induction cook top, which during like the like the winter months when we're using the heat for the propane, then we use the induction cooktop because then it avoids using up the propane for cooking when I can use an induction cooktop anyway. But I love the fact too it has a microwave space here as well, a fully functioning microwave that's small. And the only thing that really has been going in there thus far is popcorn for our movie nights. But this is the kitchen space. And there's some adjustments that we're thinking we might make in the future. But for right now, this has great functionality. So this is the dining room office area. And it's got a great big bay window. I kind of made it a little bit more personal because these are two sort of passenger seats with seat belts, which don't ask me. I don't like that design to begin with, but just kind of made it feel a little bit more homely in this corner per se, which is great. So it's our little workspace here, which is nice, but it can also be a little lounge space because this table does pop down as well. Unfortunately, underneath it is where the cats do their business temporarily. I know, I know it's in the living room space, but we keep up with it. And until we find something better, it is the perfect place in here. <laughs> All right, so let me show you something really quick that I find is super helpful. This is sort of like a standard-ish size refrigerator for a small RV. You know, if you've seen a lot of B classes, some of them look like college refrigerators, college dorm refrigerators. This one has a little bit more kind of height and leverage to it. It actually has a freezer that comes with it. Right now, we're kind of getting low on some goodies and things like that that we're going to replenish. But it's pretty much, we can stock up quite a bit from milk and orange juice, even the extra cold vino, which will come in handy in about... 20 minutes because it's almost supper time and uh we've done something really cool you guys and by the way here dave you can take one of those because oh, i'm sure thank you. it is kind of warm where we are so we ended up getting a berkey system and for those of you that don't know what a berkey is dave tell them what it is sure pretty simple a berkey is a water filtration system now we filter our water from outside into our tank and then actually through the sink there's another filter and then we take that filtered water double filter water into the berkey for that triple filter. So this is uh, our drinking water right here. And it fits perfectly. Yeah, here you go. Oh, here it is. <laughs> triple filtered. So one thing I am excited about, but at the same time wish we had more of is cabinet space. Now this one here is a big use. We call it like our everything store, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which basically has our shelves for different things we put in there, our glasses, our plateware, our skillets in here. And then this here, which is really super handy to keep things from flying all over the place. That just allows us to store our cereal Cereals and jerky because we love beef jerky and all kinds of things in that space as well And if you flip over here, we just made the best use we can because we do love our coffee So it's kind of where our coffee pot is But in the future what I'm thinking I might do is actually try and build something shelf wise here on this side So the coffee pot will fit on the right side and then our shelves for storing coffee containers or teas or things like that on that side, which would be really, really handy and useful. Here is our pantry. So it's just kind of our little pantry. We store like our supplies and spices and things and everything nice is, which is nice. And then I'm gonna show you under here, like Dave was talking about before, we have sort of our water filter system that he uses a water filter to filter from outside to inside the tanks. And then from the tanks to the sink, there's another filter, which if you look under here is right there. Is that good right there? That's nice right there. Yeah, did, like did you see that spot. Further, right? And then of course it goes from here into our Berkey system and then the Berkey system and then to our internal system called the body. <laughs> So before we get into the next part here, which is one of our favorite spots, we're gonna take you back here because there's something you guys need to see. Look at this. Who sleeps like that? Look at who sleeps like he's next to 
Billy, do you, do you see? Do you see, brother? Do you, look pretty. What is? Are you modeling for the folks here? You look straight up, <laughs> ready to, like you're basking in the sun, buddy. You look super cute. <laughs> <laughs> so since the bedroom space is kind of being preoccupied because they're both lounging on the beds right now i'll just give you the quick version of this so these are two twin beds right here two twin beds that we can make into a queen which is what we call the princess pad here this comes out and we slap it down here which makes it a full queen so everybody sleeps comfortably up here at in the evening both dave and i have our own drawer spaces up here which by the way if i pop that open yeah, it's kind of stuck to the max. I might have overpacked for things, but hey, you live and learn. But those two soft little uh, containers here fit really nicely to help allow you to keep things organized and to be able to close those. And those are on both sides, even Dave. In addition to, I actually added here, this little sort of clear phone case holder, um, whatever you want it to be holder. Uh, we put that back there as well between to kind of give us access to put our phones and things in the back space. Right, buddy? Look at those guys. And then on each side right here, we have a drawer here. And there's a drawer here where we can store stuff. And then we both have giant closet spaces under here and under here uh, where we kind of keep like I actually added uh, additional drawer space. Uh, two little kind of cheap containers to store things in here as well as our hard drives, things like that as well. So extra, extra space. Like I said, the biggest thing of all is trying to maximize the use of space um, to make it livable for our adventures, which we're about to embark on. All right, so before I show you the best feature inside this RV, which you're probably not going to believe is the best feature, but for us, it's the best feature. Dave and I, we actually love watching our Netflix or movies. So we opted for the entertainment package, which is this right here. It comes with like a DVD player that has like access to um, load Amazon Prime, things of that nature. And uh, of course it has like a, a JBL sound bar, which we can Bluetooth from our phones, Bluetooth directly for movies, things like that here. But we don't watch this as much as we should because we have something else. And I'm going to show you at the end. It's pretty freaking cool, but wait till the end. Let me show you something else. All right, so we should point out that we do have what is called the Truma AquaGo um, and Truma heating system. So basically, um, the Truma AquaGo allows us instant hot water. So we don't have a hot water tank per se. We do in a sense that it's constantly flowing hot water through the Truma system. Um, and we do have a heating system as well attached to that. Um, and one of the coolest things about this particular RV is it was designed to really conserve and preserve energy um, and not waste. So the faster you can heat up the water, the less you have to waste it from your tanks and the heat as well. And so this being so strongly insulated, the heat, it maintains it in here quite well. There's different pockets we've learned throughout the that could probably use a little bit more insulation, but for the most part, it is dynamite. Now, with that being said, let's step into the secret room. Oh, Dave, are you getting hot? It's a little hot in here. I mean, that is like the price you pay for doing stuff like this. We want that perfect sound. We can't blast the AC, so we got to take one for the team, don't we? <laughs> exactly. The AC is ducted, <laughs> it, but it's still a little loud. It's still it's a off. little bit loud. So step into our El Baño, you guys. So you might want to widen that screen up, Dave. One is the bit yeah. and showcase what's in here, but boy, oh boy. So this is our tiny but mighty bathroom space. They kind of give you a medicine cabinet, which is right here. It's great. We kind of have our little stuff stored. I have these little trays in there could be a little better organized, but hey, you're getting the real deal. It has a cute little sink here as well. Um, we actually got these little containers here to hold our toothpaste, our toothbrushes, you know, things like that as well. And what's cool here is the fact that we do not have a black tank. I know, no, no black tank. We that have, cool? It's cool we'll for to us. Yes. <laughs> but we do have what is called a cassette toilet. And this is the toilet right here. Um, it's a theft Ford or Thetford or uh, the T Ford or something like that. Thetford. Yeah, Thetford. Thetford. Yeah. Yes. So it actually swivels. Now I don't know who the heck is going to fit this direction. Yeah. I mean, that's, that maybe that creates more space for you, but not creates when you're more space, on it. but not when you're sitting on it. So no. you just kind of we tend to leave it right in its position. There you go, right there. But a uh, cassette toilet will explain to you a little bit more how that works on the outside. But to make it quite simple, all you do is you're just using it. It goes into its own little cassette, closes off, and there you go. Dave takes care of that, puts all the wonderful deodorizer in it, so it doesn't have a smell at all so far. So far. <laughs> also because we don't do a number two in there. Um, but one of the coolest things you might be saying, okay, well, where is the shower? Okay, what, how do you guys shower? Well, let me show you. This is a very European style shower where it closes all around you that. here. And you're basically having a oxygenics head shower, which is great pressure in here, by the way, and instant hot. So this, 
right here. Keep everything from getting wet. Closes like this. Bye. Now we take the rug in, of course. I don't use the rug in here, but the rug is right now because when I'm washing my face and things like that, I prefer to have like a rug to stand on. Anyway, it closes like this. Shower. Shower is power. And it's really, really, really cool. Keeps things pretty dry in here. And you can put it on instant hot. So the hot water heats up pretty quickly. Wouldn't you say, Dave? Oh, it does. It's right? great. It's really great for its small functioning space, which we have used on multiple occasions in here. And we're pretty pleased with how it works in uh, such a small space to be able to have a full stand and shower. And let me show you something. I'm like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, Dave, you saw before he's pretty tall. Let me show you what he looks like. Hey! Right? I can stand up straight in this, stand up which is straight. amazing. I mean, look at that room. Right? I remember some of those Class Bs. I was like down like this in them. Oh, yeah. Right, but now I'm standing You're up. Standing up. Kind of a little you can turn, down. you can right? dance, you can scrub, you can bend, you can... That's right. Oh, oh. bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> so really quick, I just want to show you guys a little bit of our systems here. Um, this is kind of our monitoring control panel, things like that as well. So up top here is the Xantrex system. The Xantrex is our inverter. It's a 2000 watt inverter. So if you guys are familiar with that, I'm sure you RVs are. This is what we use if we're not plugged into shore power to be able to power our supplies, things like that as well. Anything that's more of the AC adapt, AC plugs you see around here. The DCs tend to run off the battery of the coach. The ACs tend to run off the inverter. So our charging for our, our batteries, all those great things will come from the inverter. Uh, even the AC runs off of the inverter when you're not plugged into shore power. So remember that. Uh, we actually have here what is called the Mopeka system. So before we got this, our propane monitoring system was just us wishing and praying that nice. it didn't go low when it wasn't supposed to. Don't run to. out. Don't run out. But this helps us to prevent us from uh, uh, running out by actually allowing us to monitor the propane tanks. Right here is a cool little control panel. Kind of helps you monitor the coach battery, the generator, the water pump, and the tank levels. And the, the thing about this is I will say I wish there was a manual switch for the generator at times because if this panel goes, um, which is powered, goes off power, there's no way for us interior to control the generator. So that's something that that, you know, maybe we'll work out in the future. Now, I do like that you can monitor these things as well. We can turn off the water pump, which I'm going to turn off right now. Um, we tend to like to keep it off, especially when we're not in the RV because the cats will, you know, could potentially trip something and we don't want that to happen. But I also like the fact that we can monitor our tank water levels. <gasps> The fresh is 21%, but take the gray. Oh my gosh, that gray is almost 70%. I'll take care of that. Okay. Just like that, all done. All right, so let's see if the accuracy of this tank level reader is basically showing all done. And yep, that looks like, if it clears up, there it, there it is, 2%, it's empty. Nice job, babe, nice job. Oh, I just had to come back in here because now it's actually pretty cool. But I forgot to mention to you guys, for our cats in particular, we actually installed some really cool sort of cat screens here, which protects not only the screens on the other side, which by the way, are not the greatest screens. Bugs still get in through those screens, but with this extra layer of protection, they don't. But at the same time, it protects us from Bubby's claws. See his claws and Billy's claws. Hi cuties. Wanna say hello? Yeah, <laughs> such a cutie pie. But those screens actually help us protect them, um, you know, from them getting at the other screens. And it, it's pretty strong, so it's really designed for cats in that in that sense. And we have them custom throughout all of our windows here in the RV. All right, back to Dave. You hear that up there, babe? What? Well, that is oh. our 13,500 BTU ducted air conditioner, oh, and it's cracking God. away. It is definitely cranking. But, but it is loud. I mean, <laughs> I know it's ducted, and inside it's louder, right, when we're sleeping. You definitely feel it, but it does a great job. It does. Right, we've been, like we said, we've been in here nine months and uh, in some high heat situations, and it actually keeps us pretty cool. Thank you for keeping us cool. Now, you see this space right here? Oh, now, yeah. This is our massive internal insulated and heated garage space. Oh. And you won't believe how much you can fit in here. Now, just a word of warning, it may not be pretty, <laughs> but I'm going to show it to you. I try to organize it, but hey. Oh, you know, see. no one ever claimed that I was neat. Let's see that bird. Oh, there it whoa, is. mama. Yeah. See, it's a little stuffed, a little stuffed. Now we do have this nice little netting here. Oh, I 
like right. that. Right, which actually would normally go on the back of a pickup, but it works well to kind of put it across the top, keep some of the lighter things. Yeah. But you can see, you can fit a lot in here. Oh my gosh, can you look at that? Oh my, oh, wow, wow, wow. And that's, and that's not even the half of it. <laughs> mm. Hmm. But believe you and me, it all fits in there, doesn't it? Uh, it's like a jigsaw puzzle when I get everything in there. <laughs> oh yeah. And there's not just one door. There's a second door right here. Ooh. And. <gasps> and. Come on this way. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> we aren't done yet. And there's a third door oh. and every door is equally messy inside. Look at that. <laughs> so we're going to shut that right up right now. <laughs> Enough of that. And actually, all kidding aside, we can fit just a ton in there. We have two foldable bikes we put in there. We have our grill. We have our chairs, our tables. They all go in there when we hit the road. So we get a lot in there. And it fits just perfectly. It does. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Hey, babe, it's five o'clock. Ooh, I know exactly where you're going with that. Ah, and right where we're going is to the outdoor kitchen. You guys, and this is another, uh, another reason that we really love this so far. We didn't think we would, but it's really come in handy, especially for cocktail hour. It looks like all we got in that outdoor kitchen, it looks like drinks. Mm. That's not always the case. That's for you. Oh, thank you, baby. And that is for me. Mm, crack it open. One for you. Cheers, baby. And one for me. And so that is another great reason. Yes, right now we do only have beverages in here, but it's a full outdoor kitchen. You know what? Let me show you. Oh, kidding aside, it does have a really nice functioning kitchen outdoors. So, you know, if you want that extra space or to cook outdoors, so you can kind of still be connected to, you know, the outside of whomever's out here entertaining, it's got a two propane burner stove right outside that's connected to the propane. And there's actually hookups underneath here for hot and cold water. So this way we can actually use this as our dishwashing uh, capabilities. But what's cool about this too is once again, they're always thinking this is a, a cutting board. So it could also be used for a cutting board, um, storage, but it, right now main function is like an outdoor sink to be to wash your dishes and things like that. So it comes in really handy to have this outdoor kitchen. But like Dave said, currently it's great for holding those cold cocktails. <laughs> Well, I know what you're waiting for. Everyone's <laughs> waiting to learn about the heating system, oh, right, yeah, babe? Absolutely. Everyone wants to know that, Everybody right? Wants to know let's, about the heating. So let's talk about the heating system. And it runs off propane. Uh, it's a Truma system. It actually does our heat and also the hot water. It's called the AquaGo system. And I want to show you the propane tanks that it runs off because they are just standard 10-pound tanks like this. You can swap them out really at any place, which is awesome. And let me tell you a story of these, actually. Uh, back in January, we were up in oh, Dixie yeah. Hills National Forest in Utah. We were in freezing cold weather for like eight days, so eight cold. nights, and so we were cold. running the heat nonstop overnight. We only used one tank. One you believe tank! That? We couldn't believe it. And, and truth be told, we had no idea what the levels were. We were worried <laughs> we were going to run out of propane completely because we did not have that most PICA system at the time actually uh, you know, doing the gauges. All right, and for those wondering, this is the Truma AquaGo system. There's an on-off switch right here. You can go either down or up, turn it on, and that's it. <laughs> All right, babe, since I got the gloves, yeah. I think everyone's waiting. Oh my God. Everyone's really? waiting. What's this? What are we talking about here? I think I know what you're talking about. Dun, dun, the dun. dreaded the cassette, cassette toilet. toilet. Let's open it up. All right, right now. That's what we're talking about inside. You know, that's the toilet, and exactly. that's where the yeah. stuff goes. I'll kind of show this to you anyway. Right now, it's a five pound cassette tank for five those. Gallon. Yeah, sorry, five, five gallon. gallon. You got it. Thanks for the correction. You're welcome. All right, and you can dump this thing anywhere. anywhere. Kind of like this. All right, and see when that's done, just put it back just like this. Voila, just like that. Now, Tanya mentioned that desert snow is great for off-grid, and I want to show you why that is. First up, in this compartment, door number one. Door number one. All right, so you have actually two 320 amp lithium ion battery so a total of 640 amps over 8200 watts of lithium battery power which is amazing we can take this off grid and actually the transit has a second alternator to charge the batteries as well so not only can we charge the batteries with the second alternator but even up above there's actually 455 watts of solar power charging these babies so that's great and that's Ooh, not all wee, that's a great amount of power baby and now <laughs> it's time for door number, number two, two. 
Ooh, what's behind door number door two? Door number two. <gasps> ah. Now, not just the two lithium batteries, we actually have an Onan uh, 2800 generator, which is super quiet and uh, it helps charge the batteries. We do a lot in both the heat of the summer and also the cold. In the summer months, you need all that power to regenerate the air conditioner and the batteries here. And so that's why we got the generator as well. And if you recall, Tanya mentioned that this has true four season capability. I'm gonna show you why that is. From the fresh to the gray water tanks, as well as a cassette toilet, and even more, and actually these, these compartments are all heated, right? So that, which is great. So if you're in super cold weather, there is no need to winterize. Now, before we move on, I want to talk about this thing right here, which is like an additional bonus for us. You know, when you're parked in a spot, you're perfectly parked. So the sun goes and rises and sets, but it shifts in different directions. So when it's really, really hot in the summertime, this here is called the bat wing awning. And it works a little something like this. Yeah, the so-called bat wing. The so-called bat wing. Here we go. Yeah, roll it on up. Yeah, we unlatch all these guys here. Yeah, take off the uh, Velcro. The Velcro straps. Right on through. All right. all right, and then it kind of rolls out like so. Right. All right, and then this is the first leg of it. And then we Come just kind of go around. Bring it around. Here it comes. Oh, here it comes. It's like a parachute. So you don't, you don't want to do this when it's super windy. No, <laughs> definitely not. Like this, right now. I feel like the wind's picking up a little bit. Yeah. Right, and then this should it, come in. Let me help you with that. In here. And then this guy comes down. Let's see, how does that work? You kind of slide him back. Okay. Yeah, and, okay, cool. And this comes down. Now, got it. This comes right down there. Ah, okay. And then you would normally use pivots to kind of. Right, you can kind of pull things down. Right, pull things down and pull them tight and secure. And then right and same here. Same thing too. with the ropes. Okay, so we're pull not going to. Pull that down. Okay. But hey, that's great, but this is great. It's kind of cold now, of course. Bat wing. Okay, you may have noticed during the tour that we have this flagpole here, and on top, there's not a flag, but that <laughs> is Starlink. And we're testing that out. We will let you know our feelings that is it worth uh, for full time RVers? We'll let yeah, we've been right. using it for quite some time, so it's probably important for us to yeah. kind of put a full video together on our experience with that. Exactly, so stay tuned for that. And here, now these are great. Now they have Ooh. not been used yet, fortunately. These are just basically mud tracks. We actually thought at one point we we're gonna have to use them. We were driving through some serious mud in Utah, but fortunately our all-wheel drive got us through that. But these we have just in case. Woohoo! Dave. I'm up here. Oh, oh, I up oh. Here. Pan up. What are you what are you doing up there? I thought I'd uh, give him a glimpse of the solar panels up here. What do you think? Ah, uh, pretty smart move. All right, here you go. Catch. All right, thank you, babe. Nice catch, buddy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And you can see here we got uh, three solar panels, a total of 455 watts of solar. They're a bit dirty, I gotta say. A little bit of pollen in the air. Hey, that's nine months, baby. Exactly, exactly. And over here we have actually a WeBoost Reach, which we helps us with our cell uh, connection as well when we're on the road. And of course, we mentioned before, there's the old air conditioner, the culprit that is a little bit noisy sometimes. But works flawlessly. All right, so for those of you that might be wondering about the AC and how long can you run the AC without shore power, meaning you're boondocking just using the inverter. Well, I'll tell you one thing, you can't run the AC in this puppy along with every other device or you will blow that inverter. But if you're just running the AC, we noticed that the AC will take about 900 to 1000 watts of power running that AC. And with that being said, we had the temperature set to about 70 degrees, running it constantly in about 100 degree weather. And it lasted us about three and a half hours, four hours, where it dropped down to about 40% now. We didn't go any further than that before we cranked on the generator, because as you know, if you run down lithium batteries to zero, you are basically fudged. And I didn't say fudge. <laughs> Oh, we can't forget about the dualies, babe. We cannot forget right? about those dualies. And this, and this is something we weren't quite sure of as we thought about more of an all-wheel drive off-road vehicle. But it does come with dualies. And so far, we've been pretty pleased with the traction. We actually took these through some pretty muddy areas. They got us through without any difficulty. But yeah, you got the dualies. But can you tell me about something else? How about those mosquitoes? Because they're coming out and biting. They're coming out. I think it's time can to get, get the. Rid of those mosquitoes? I think it's time to get the little uh, propane fire <laughs> fired up. <laughs> All right, so before we wrap this up with the two best things that we saved for last, Dave's gonna have to have a little beef jerky. What am I doing, a little beef jerky? <laughs> and it's not this. Not that, it's this right here. All right, put this down. Hold on, here we go. Of course, we got the quick connect here. Here we go, hook that up. Now, little quick connect propane 
And we have our little propane fire pit to enjoy the evening. All right. All right, be careful, babe. Ooh. Sometimes there's a little minor explosions ah, here. Light Ooh, there we go. That was actually perfect. Flame on. Perfect. And this is actually a nice little handy, right? We like this. Oh, I'm ready. Nice and easy. I'm ready. All right, so now that we got this nice warm fire started and I got the mosquito repellent very activated, important. which yes. is very important. Yes. Not to mention a really cool something on the side that we're going to share with you in just a minute. We should probably tell them why we came up with the name Desert Snow. You tell them. Okay. For the and, RV. Yeah, and for <laughs> those that do not know, we are from both Nevada and Boston. We've got a share time between those two locations. And of course, you got the Nevada Desert, you got the Boston Snow. We love camping in the snow and the heat as well, so hence Desert Snow. And it makes the most sense since this yes. RV has all of those capabilities to be able to go in both the extreme heat and the ex very cold. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure about extreme cold, but very cold. And so that's his name. It's very fitting. If you like that name, let us know in the comment section below. We'd appreciate that. Plus, one of the coolest things we're doing here, you guys, are the hidden gems. We're looking for the hidden gems. So if you have some hidden gems in your area, let them us know in the comment section below because we just may want to check Ooh, mosquito. Yeah, some of those cup. out as well. Hit that subscribe <laughs> button and join the journey. Yes, exactly. Please subscribe. Thank you. All right, babe. Yeah. It's time for the grand finale. Ooh, drum roll, please. Ooh. Wait, wait, hold up. Come on, you know better. Oh, you want a beat. I want. Do, do, oh. Do, do, uh, do, do, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, uh, Double over the sound. Uh, 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 Double over the sound. <laughs> And go! Now one thing we should mention is that while Desert Snow does not have a black tank, it does have a 50 gallon fresh water tank and a 51 gallon gray water tank. So you have plenty of water and uh, if you want to take a long shower with that uh, instant hot, you can take long showers. You have plenty of water to drink and to cook with. So it's actually a really, really great system.